Hello everybody and welcome to this next video. Today we will be talking about yet another editor and uh, that editor is called Spacemax. Now, firstly I want to discuss a little thing about Vim. Now, Vim, as I've discussed in my first video, um, talking about Vim is a very good editor, but only primarily because of its um, quite intuitive controls. Now, the problem with Vim is that it's there are quite a few add-ons available. However, it is usually not really a good editor for editing larger files, in my opinion, at least. It works. It's quite good. It works. It does what it's supposed to do. However, um, there are better alternatives, um, one of which I will be talking to you, I'll be talking about today. Um, there is an editor uh, created by the GNU project called GNU Emacs, or just Emacs for short. It is also a very extensible editor like Vim, however, um, it is usually called the, um, it's usually being fun off for being too complicated. So, people say Vim is a good editor if only it had a good operating system, and Emacs is a good operating system if only it had a good editor. Now, what that means is that Emacs, you can do almost everything in Emacs, I'm not kidding. Uh, Many people barely even leave Emacs because there's just almost so much you can do inside of Emacs on on its own without having to add any um, things to it. And uh, yes, it's a very good editor. However, the controls are a bit clunky. Uh, you use these, the control key, the shift key, the alt key. And in my opinion, that is not really intuitive. And you get your, your hands hurt whenever you have to uh, you know, reach out for the control key or the alt key. And depending on what keyboard you use, they're really weirdly placed, you know. So, um, recently I have, uh, well, discovered on one of my internet searches the following product. It is called Spacemax. It is uh, a fork of Emacs. However, its focus is on um, combining the greatness of Emacs with the greatness of Vim. Meaning that there's Vim controls and stuff like that, but the core is still Emacs, so, however, you can control them like Vim, which is the best thing. So if I'm open, if I'm going to open a file, I've got a few down here, I'm just going to open this for, why not, uh, one second, I'm going to change this a bit. So, this is Emacs, or Spacemax in this uh, case, and as you can see, it looks like a normal editor. And if I press um, K to move up, J to move down, like you would with, e with Vim, and you can just move around like Vim. So, this is basically Vim, and I haven't yet found anything that works in Vim that doesn't work here. There are macros, which we've talked about in the last video. There are... there's everything, really. Uh, and, uh, yes, it's really good. First of all, uh, if we take a look, I'm going to I'm going to create a new file, and I'm going to be calling it uh, test.rb, just for for the sake of it. For example, uh, I'm going to make. Also, you can zoom in. You can't really zoom in with uh, Vim because it's terminal based. So, firstly, I wanted to print a stri print a string, and in Vim, you would have to create a function that it puts two exclamation marks, but in the Emacs it automatically does it, so you don't have to create weird functions or type too much because it automatically does it like any other normal editor would, like it places two of those, two of those, so it does these things automatically without you having to do anything. So, as you can see, it's just quite handy uh, to do, or it's quicker, in my opinion, to work in Emacs. Mm, especially, for example, if we create an if function, it automatically puts an end, and if we remove it, it removes the end, and stuff like that. So it automatically automatically does all these things that we would have to manually add in Vim. So I think this adds quite a lot of usability to it, especially initially, um, meaning that you don't have to add so many things, and you can just use uh, Emacs out of the box. Obviously, Vim is a good editor out of the box as well, and its ubiquity is uh, quite important. So, um, however, I would not recommend actually using Vim for anything other than config files or smaller files because it's just not really handy, you know, in my opinion. And uh, Spacemax, 
uses the Vim key bindings, but also has uh, very good Emacs things. And Emacs is a good thing. For example, if you wanted to open a terminal, uh, oh yeah, <laughs> before I do that, I will have to explain about why it is called Space Max. Now, in Emacs, you have the Control C, and if you press Control C, you can see <laughs> all of these different things. And if you press, I, th I can't remember the Emacs ones. Uh, was it like this? No, it wasn't like this. Was it like this? Well, no, it was Alt X, I think. Stop it. <laughs> see, I just tried the Emacs controls, and it doesn't uh, work. Okay. Alt X, and if you press Alt X, Alt X, uh, Meta X, so that Meta key is Alt. You can see all these different things right here, mm. which you, you know, can start. Those are little programs you can start. Now, as, as I said, Space Max tries to focus on using not using the uh, Meta keys, the Control key, and the Shift key. Rather, it relies on the Space Bar, hence the name. So, if you press the Space Bar once. You get the lovely little bar at the bottom of the screen, and you can see there is a lot of things to do. And I think all of these came with the Emacs or Space Max by default, right? So you can see you can do a lot of things. You can see, for example, I just earlier I changed the theme and I changed uh, made the, the background transparent. You can do that by pressing T, and then you have quite a few things and. Um, what I did is cancel load theme to load themes and space max toggle transparency. So you can do that. So you just have to follow the the thing. So if if I want to, I don't know. Here's files. If I want to see something about files, I press F. There's more options here. Let's see. Find file. Okay. So for finding a file, I need to press F again. And there we go. I'm finding files. So it is very um, mnemonic. Uh, it makes quite a lot of sense as well, like FF for find files, you know. Um, and for example, if you wanted to access this menu without pressing Meta X, we just press space space. And there we go, we've opened the menu. Now the menu is, there's a lot of things in here you can do. Uh, and I'm not going to be able to show you all of those, but yeah. And if you want to open a terminal inside of Emacs, you can do so quite easily uh, by just saying... Um, Space, space, and then term. Takes a little while to start, and then there we go. We're inside uh, the terminal, and we can run things. And this is, I think this is quite cool. Um, I think this is really cool, because it just works. You have everything you need inside your terminal. Sometimes it glitches out a little bit, but uh, it, it works. Uh, also, you have um, many plugins to install. And there's really a lot of them. And you can also, because it's Emacs, uh, customize Space Max to the way you want it to be. Um, to do that, you press space FED, uh, which stands for File Edit Dam, which is a very good acronym in my opinion. <laughs> and here you go, this is the, the Space Max. Uh, configuration file like the Vim RC. So it is very much has a lot of comments so it's quite accessible if you know a little bit about ELISP. You gotta know a little bit about ELISP but you don't have to next pad. Almost everything is explained. So for example if we take a look at here it says dot space max configuration layers. Now these layers are a bit difficult to explain and they tend to be the reason that that uh, Space Max might be a little bit unstable because it often is. I haven't had any issues with it. However, uh, I would like to say that it is oftentimes with a lot of people a little bit unstable because these layers are basically uh, a collection of plugins that oftentimes were never even meant to work together. So sometimes they break things. However, these layers add a lot of functionality to them. Uh, for example, I have an HTML, YAML, Ruby, Vim script layer, and these layers allow me to write in Ruby, YAML, HTML, and Vim script without any issues, and with auto-completion, with all that kind of good stuff that Vim does not offer by default. Um, yes, there are th 
possibilities. You can add that to Vim. However, it is a bit clunky in Vim. It's not as elegant, in my opinion, to just have a normal uh, editor like we do here. Also, if there are people who would like to start Emacs or Space Max in the terminal, that is no problem at all. You just have to say Emacs NW for no window, and you can see it automatically automatically starts. And um, yeah, that's no no big deal in my opinion. So it all works quite well actually, and I think it's quite handy. And of course, I'm going to be showing you the website you will be able to download Space Max at. It is simply called spacemax.org, and there are tons of stuff you can look at here. There's everything you need in here right away. You can even look at the documentation in case you want to familiarize yourself with Emacs a bit, and Space Max especially. It is very well documented. Um, I've shown you the configuration file here so you can see um, everything that has two of these in front is a comment so there's tons of comments you can look through and see what you might want and what you might not want and also I'll be showing you another cool feature that that you will be able to add without any issue and that are quite, I think it pre-installed as well in Space Max. One of them is my favorite it's, it's just simply git. If you press space and oops space GS for git status the git thing shows up see we've just got the git thing here and uh, yeah it is quite cool uh, for example if we wanted to add um, micro dick which is my list of Microsoft owned domains to um, the well to the git we just have to press S and then this changes are staged and it says staged files, micro dick and if we press uh, tab we will be uh, listed the uh, things in the file. So that is pretty uh, pretty handy and if you want to unstage the file we just says X uh, stop it, uh, we just say sorry I am a bit idiotic um, oh there we go caps was on <laughs> And um, we can just say remove and done. And um, yeah, it shows you what you change. For example, here I change that Firefox class, and here I change something in my Ranger. I added uh, music, and I changed something in the beginner tutorial in Emacs for some reason. So, as you can see, Git works perfectly fine within, within Emacs, and it, it's really cool. No, you don't have to do it all via the terminal. You can do it all within your editor. And also, you can browse the web, the web, the web using Emacs. Uh, the, the web browser is called U. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure why it's called U. It's probably, I think it's Emacs Web Wowzer. Yes, Wowzer. But I'm not sure why why they called it U. It's like U. But okay, it is um. No, just regular web browser. You can search for things. And it's web browser. You know? So, yeah, you can browse the web as well if uh, you wanted to. And Space Max is pretty easy to install. Uh, if we just click here, uh, you will normally <laughs> be able to see something. Uh, if you click on here, okay, I'll, do, I'll just ignore that for now. If you click on here, usually you would uh, get something. And then you just have to copy that into your terminal and you will automatically have installed Emacs. But first you need to install Emacs for it to work at all. And of course it is on GitHub as well. So if you want to make your own version of it, that's no problem. You can do that quite easily. Just go here, clone it, right? Click on clone or whatever. And uh, yeah, it is a very good editor. It has now become my go-to editor for anything. Uh, if we, for example, take a look at uh, something else, if we go to the document, uh, notes, yes, I'm going to open uh, this MD file, and there's called there's something called flimd, or flymd, flyit, and what that does, it opens, uh, oh, 
Oh, well, I've broken it. Isn't that nice? <laughs> um, okay, general, generally, if you do, if you have FlyMD, I think it might actually be because of my plugins. Uh, I'll check that later. <laughs> oh, there we go. It was because of my plugins. <laughs> I knew it. So if you press, it, I'm gonna redo that just because it's I think easier. Uh, if you open FlyMD, it opens a live preview of your MD file. So if we copy that over to four, there we go. So if we move around here, as uh, so you can see, the live preview is on the left side, and you automatically update as well. So. It is very handy, and I, I really like it. And uh, yeah, Automatic has an MD preview, and you can do all kinds of things quite easily without any problem. So there's lots of plugins and a lot of things you can use. For example, this I use all the time because I take my notes whenever I learn something um, in MD, because I think taking notes in plain text is a lot uh, better than taking them in like a weird document format because it is quick to write, it has easy formatting and it's stuff like that. I don't use LaTeX uh, because I'm not a big fan of it. It's a bit too complicated for note taking but MD Markdown is quite easy for note taking so yeah you need to install the Markdown layer however whenever you open a Markdown file and you haven't installed the layer yet it will automatically install it for you. It's no problem. So yeah uh, this is um, Spacemax, it is a very good editor and I would definitely recommend you trying it out if you haven't already and if you're a fan of uh, Vim. Uh, I hope you enjoyed watching my video and if you have any questions you are free to take or to write a comment down below in the comments and I hope you have a great day and tell me about your experiences with Emacs and Spacemax and Vim. And, well, I hope to see you next time when we'll be talking about something else which I'm not quite sure about yet. Goodbye.